The 2012 Hurling Championship began on the 19th of May and now, almost four months later, it is due to conclude here at Croke Park this afternoon. Kilkenny are the defending champions, Galway are making a rare appearance in the final. But who will be taking home the Lee McCarthy Cup? The throw-in for this year's final is at 3.30. Hello and you're very welcome to Croke Park on Hurling's Big Day. Well, it's almost 20 years since Kilkenny and Galway last met in the All-Ireland Hurling Final. That was in 1993. And of course, this venue has changed quite considerably in the years in between. But one thing that has never changed at this magnificent stadium, that is the drama that a championship decider can bring and also that burning desire to see your team walk up the steps of the Hogan Stand and claim the trophy. They're queuing up Hayes. Oh, what a goal! Down by Joe Kelly! What a start! Ball inside. Bowers gave it for Fucking it down. He can score! Magnificent goal! It's party time in Galway. It is Galway, and they have won this All Ireland semi final. Power, Reed, goal! Quaid out quickly, real danger, here's Shepard, should be a goal it is. Goal chance for Fogarty, goal! Goal on here! Brilliant goal! Coming through the centre is Aiden Fogarty, takes a shot and it's in the back of the net. It's a repeat of the Leinster hurling file. What about that for a mouth-watering prospect? Well, the big question is, can Kilkenny claim their ninth All-Ireland crown in 13 years and add to this unprecedented list of trophies they've been claiming in the modern era? Or can Galway take the Liam McCarthy Cup west of the Shannon for the first time since 1988? Yeah, it's a day to savour, and here to savour it with me are Liam Sheedy, Gerlach Nan and Tomás Mulcahy. Gentlemen, I've been reading all the papers, watching all the programmes and radio and television, trying to get views and everybody saying, hard to call. Is it hard to call, Liam? Yeah, it is hard to call. It's probably a, a amazing, really, to think that uh, Galway have beaten Kilkenny by 10 points already in the championship and to find themselves, you know, massive outsiders yeah. coming into the game, be, very big outsiders. But I guess that just gives you the, you know, I suppose the stature that we all view Kilkenny in. I mean, Galway are coming in for the first final in seven years, Kilkenny are coming in for the seventh final in seven years. So, you know, they've been the standard bearers for a number of mm. years. And, you know, but I mean, it's, I think it's set up for a really classic match. I think Galway are in really good form. You know, all the world is that training is going really well for them. Likewise, in Kilkenny, you know, they, they definitely got their wake up call the, the, the first week in July. They've built steady sensed very very impressive in the semi-final so I think we're set up for a classic here today I suppose it is a measure of Kilkenny Jarrett that despite what Liam said that defeat that they took that people still believe that they are the team they're the ones to do it without a doubt Michael and I, I'd say in all that analysis you've been reading you've, you've, one thing has stood out everybody is saying the first 20 minutes of this game not only are going to be vital but are going to be ferociously physical you know mm. so everybody's looking to that but at the same time, when you look at Kilkenny, you know, you, uh, are, have, have they met a challenge since, like they met from Galway on that day? Mm. Against Limerick? Against Tipperary? Definitely not. So, mm. I mean, it's, it's, it's unproven. Even though the bookies have them at 3-1 and Galway are 1-3, to three, whatever mm. it is. Yeah. You know, if Galway, you know, the old story of meeting fire with fire. We know Kilkenny are going to come out and really mm. blaze into today. But like my attitude would be, meet fire with an inferno. And that has to be a Galway's attitude in that first 20 minutes. And even if they just hold their own, we don't expect them to be 2-6 yeah. to a point ahead yeah. after 20 minutes. Yeah. Even if they just hold their own in that first 20 minutes, then we have a real all island. But of course, Brian Cody has been warning the GEA, if there is an inferno, let it blaze away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you, 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, you mentioned so much about the build-up and about all the paper talk. I mean, I've never heard so much talk about a referee coming into a match, you know. So, I mean, I think that puts an awful lot of pressure on yes. Barry Kelly, you know. I mean, since the semi-final against Tipperary, I mean, there's been a lot being said. You know, so there, there is a lot of pressure on it. I mean, if we do get the fireworks for the first 10 minutes, I mean, it's, it's going to take cool heads, you know. And I mean, that's what hurling is all about as well. And there's no doubt about it. I mean, Galway 
you can take on Kilkenny on the physical stakes and so many teams have done it in the past but what they did in the Leinster final yes they did match them fire for fire but they produced the hurling side yeah. of it as well yeah. hurling yeah. will win out today yeah. now, you won't beat Kilkenny on the physical yeah. stakes you can match them st- stand up face to face take them on face to face run at them but at the end of the day it's over the bar or under the bar that is the crucial thing and Galway will have to believe that they can reproduce what they did in the Leinster final. All right. Well, now, of course, the last uh, time Galway claimed the All-Ireland title back in 1988, Anthony Cunningham was very much part of that special time for Galway hurling. Indeed, he was uh, also on the last Galway team to beat Kilkenny in the All-Ireland final, that in 1987. Well, he is now, of course, the Galway manager. And uh, when I caught up with him recently, well, we talked about his hopes for this current crop of Galway players. It is Galway. They have beaten Cork and Croke Park. Anthony Cunningham has done an absolutely wonderful job. He's taken his team to an All-Ireland hurling final. Matty, Kenny and Tom and I sat down last um, October after getting, getting the job. I mean, we, we, we suppose we looked at say, the bigger picture. We were in place for three years and uh, we sort of said this, this needs development. We probably had looked at a good number of players who were there and hadn't probably... You know, through no fault of their own or through no fault of previous management, we'd have to say that that didn't really get get over the line or, or you know, get to the, get to the promised land of an All Ireland final. I suppose we put a lot of emphasis on coaching, put a lot of emphasis on playing hurling, and again, maybe previous managements hadn't, you know, maybe put as much emphasis on that. But uh, certainly, I suppose that's the way the, that's the way I like to operate, and uh, the guys with with me like to operate. Nice ball inside, and here comes David Park. Sending it across, they're queuing up Hayes. Oh, what a goal! Absolutely brilliant hurling by Galway. Galway have a particular style of hurling, and uh, that had gone missing for the last few years. It was built on a lot of pace and a lot of skill, and Galway had a lot of skill for hurlers coming through. But um, I, I think, you know, toughness and, you know, uh, work, work rate really was missing in the last number of years. Wow! What a shocker in Crook Park! Well, I mean, any day you play Kilkenny, it's nearly an honour, really. I mean, they have been, you know, they've brought the game to such a height and everyone wants to emulate Kilkenny. So we had no fear, really. We just threw caution to the wind and uh, believed in our own game and had a right cut at them. So I guess Cork, like, I mean, had played some very good hurling. They're developing team again. And there was always going to be, you know, the question, could we get up to the same level? But we were happy, you know, to have to, you know, to, to have been 11 points each at half time and uh, to have kicked on from there. And it was a good way to go into the final and, you know, having a good few improvement areas to work on. So, uh, Brian Cody's 12th All-Ireland, Henry Shefflin going for 9, and uh, Tommy Welch going for 8 All-Stars. So they have, they have huge talent and, and, and huge know-how. The work rate is phenomenal. Like Henry Shefflin's game is built on work rate. So you've really got to match the work rate and that's the way the modern game has gone. They'll obviously be trying to put one over us, but uh, it's our first time there in quite a while, and uh, you know we have a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of energy to bring to the table and a lot of skill, and uh, we're trying to outwit them. We're back to the old goal, you know, when the spirit and the, the drive that the supporters are giving us is huge and immense. I mean, you know, what else could you be doing really on the, on the first or second Sunday of September? That's where you want to be. Um, you know, it's got a lot of work, but it's most rewarding when you're working with a panel of players and, you know, that the, the goodwill is there behind us. And uh, it, will be, it will be a fantastic game, I've no doubt about that. And, uh, you know, we're, we're ready, we're able, but uh, it will take some, some performance to win. Yeah, the Galway hurling manager, Anthony Cunningham, and uh, we'll be hearing from Brian Cody a little bit later on in the programme. Ger, you played against Anthony Cunningham in his time, of course, and uh, to me he was always a very intelligent player, and he seems to have brought that to the Galway management as well. That was a very enthusiastic, very intelligent, uh, uh, unorthodox player, you know, mm. but I suppose, mm. you know, he was involved in the first real innovation that took place in hurling in 1986 when, when Galway played to Kenny in Torles in an All-Ireland semi-final. Right. You know, they played a third midfielder. Nobody yes. had ever mm. heard Anthony before, uh, heard this tactic ever been brought uh, to bear before. It worked absolutely perfectly against Kilkenny. They just cleaned them out. Kilkenny didn't know what was happening. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, Tried they repeated again, yes. it in the All Ireland <laughs> final. And Johnny Crowley was cornered back on Anthony, actually. Mm. Yes, and Anthony indeed. was outside the field. Mm. And of course, the thing was, hit the ball into the space in the mm. corner forward. Unfortunately, Johnny Crowley was standing inside but the that, space. But that and, is. And, and, and he, uh, he, he got better the match and Cork won the All Ireland. Yeah, yeah. Now, mm. 
hopefully history won't repeat itself again because yeah, we had yeah. a huge tactical yes. innovation by Anthony in, in the in the semi final here, bringing all the forwards out the field. Can Kenny know about that? Now, will he have a different plan for today, or will he go with that plan again? But well, he's an intelligent guy. Now. He's mean, a very intelligent he, he, guy, solid guy, feet on the ground, brings in his two selectors, constantly involved with him. Doesn't talk too loudly. Players great, great confidence in him, and he's really one of the, the, the really promising up and coming managers. Yeah, but Liam, that uh, tactic they use of bringing, particularly Damien Hayes out around the middle of the field. I mean, that's that's a, a, a part of what they do. It's not a sort of a, a smart move they're trying to pull off. If you know what I mean? No, I, 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 it's not something that they plan. And say, look, we'll do that for this match. I yeah. mean, this, there's a clear yeah. tactic around it. But I, I think more importantly than that, it's not just about having Damien Hayes. I mean, you'll see the players popping up. There's good movement around the forward, so Joe Canning can pop up in that corner. David Burke can go across mm -hmm. to the far. So like, it's more of a rotation of their forward line, so they have a man drawn out, but it's not as if that space where Damien is normally yeah, supposed yeah. to be filled is left vacant. Yeah. Mm. There's someone in filling yeah. the space, and there's players running in, and Damien is very good at making the run and coming into the space himself. So, you know, it worked very well from the last day. Of course, the big question is, does yeah. it work again today? Of course, that's always the question, and always, as always, all Ireland hurling final day creates a great carnival atmosphere around Dublin over the weekend, all focusing, of course, on the streets around Croke Park this afternoon. But Clara McNamara has been out and about and meeting some of the fans as they head to today's game. Well, as you can imagine, there's a huge bus at Blah. We do it again. There is a huge buzz of excitement and anticipation in the roads around Croke Park. I'm joined by some Galway and some Kilkenny fans. Can Galway beat Kilkenny twice in one year? No bother to them. They'll, they'll crucify the cats. Why oh. they? Oh. Is Joe Canning going to be the man today? Yeah, Joe 3 7. <laughs> no, not yeah. today. Yeah, he, he will. I think so. I think uh, this is a big day for Joe Kenny. I think he's produced the goods today. You've waited a long time for this. Yes, I was a young man the last time I was here, so getting on in the years now, hopefully they'll do it today. Yeah. What about Kilkenny? Can they avenge the Leinster final defeat? Oh, oh, Kilkenny by two or three points will do me. You're still hungry for more success in Kilkenny despite all the titles? Oh, of course. They might beat us once, but they definitely won't get his toys, I tell you. <laughs> Woo! We are very much looking forward to it out here in Croke Park. All right, thanks, Claire. And I can tell you there'll be no second takes for Galway or Kilkenny today out in Croke Park. Um, obviously, the big contrast between Galway and Kilkenny going into today's final is the level of success the Cats have achieved over the past decade and more. Uh, Galway, for their part, have produced plenty of players uh, over the years with great potential. But Kilkenny seemed to have the special knack of taking their players straight off the conveyor belt and right into championship mode. We've all heard the expression that the Kilkenny man is born with a hurley in his hand. But they tell you down here that just like those tailor-made hurleys, a hurler isn't just born, it takes a lot of hard work to make him great.